Ladies and gents, welcome to the show. If you ain't in the poetry, I think it's time to go. We got a lot of lyrics that you see on the show. Yeah, yeah. Whenever they get finished, you're gonna be wanting some more. Come over here and peep some of this poetry Blowing with my lyrics, yeah, that's the meaning of poetry I really like rhyming, that's your only way of knowing me Tell your friends and family to come watch some Neo Soul Ladies and gents, welcome to the show Neo Soul, Neo Soul, Neo Soul If you ain't in the poetry, I think it's time to go Neo Soul, Neo Soul, Neo Soul We got a lot of lyrics that you see on the show Neo Soul, Neo Soul, Neo Soul Whenever they get in this, you gon' be wanting some love Neo Soul, Neo Soul, Neo Soul Remember the woman who touched the Lord's robe to get well. She had heard of the works of Jesus and knew that he would not fail. She touched his garment and was healed with great power. Faith had made her well. She was healed in that hour. I know the Lord will supply your need. Ooh, as I look back over my life, I realize I've had some ups and downs. Yes, I have. There were times I thought I couldn't make it, couldn't make it through. No, 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 no. But there's always the answer. I trusted Jesus when I didn't know what to do. He always made a way for me, and I always made it through.
We are so excited to hear from you, Prayer. Um, she's phenomenal, and that's all I can say. But I do want to make mention that the artwork that you see, the amazing artwork that you see just behind her, it was all furnished by our artist, Pascal, that you heard from earlier today. So, Prayer, are you ready? Yes, sir. Awesome. Thank you. I feel some knowledge loss. There were times when I was on top of things. I knew everything. I did everything. I knew myself, was within myself, never left myself, was for myself. Continue. Oh. My writing had the key to my heart. I would be so wise and understanding, highly intellectual and articulating. Not once did I miscalculate myself. When be on term for a lot, would care enough to hide, would be so outspoken, sometimes nonchalant, would never just sit. Nowadays, I have a group of people a group of people I lean on, a group of friends who will also accommodate me for who I am. Society, is, I feel, is taking up a lot of space. Yes, I found an answer, real people rather words, sense of belonging rather rejection. In which way, though, do I regain myself? I feel worthless. I feel dimmed. I feel as though it's all gone. I desire to be revived. I don't want to detach. I simply want to reattach. I need myself again. My passion I need again. I don't feel more, rather less. Is my life's growth place closed? I need my fire again. I feel truly empty. I get tired quickly. I think a lot more and less a bit. Frustrated on a daily. Feelings of giving up. Getting tired of this daily living nonsense. The immoralities I face. The uncommon man became common. I still strive to be alone. Don't mean to upset, it's, my, it's just my real self. Why have I let my living take away from my gift? I need you back, yet I push you out with my own hands. I see progression in others. They see the same, rather I feel it not. Prayer, you are more than this. Pick yourself up. Never look down. The minute you're distracted is when the viper strikes. Don't, let, don't have a lawn at all. All snakes and lizards don't stay in the grass. Harbor not a field for community. Become community while in your own independent unity. Uni uniform living in the animal kingdom confuses the predator. In silence, make the loudest noise. Don't even entertain the nonsense. Do you and acquire your wealth alone. It's not selfish if you operate for yourselves-ish. Keep it PG while it's rated R and M. Shoot high like a gazer. You were born to be great. Let your decisions be for you. If they love you, they stick with you through it all. Obey. Forgive. Don't be quick to, to forget yet love. Love them to death. Grow more than expected. Be prayerful more for you are is be happy work eat sleep and accomplish you know yourself so be yourself your time is near and your time is always here thank you girl you are the bomb thank you. like no like i don't think you understand right now you are like a lyrical genius po phenomenal poet you 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 did that thank you so much. that was beautiful Happy right the holy ghost all right <laughs> amazing Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. So let's start, let's start with the, the base of this the poem that you, you know, just shared with us. What's, what's, what's? Yeah, inspiration. The, the, um, yes. 
So first off, my name is Prayer. I am originally from Nigeria. And the poem was basically like my 10th grade year this year. It's not like a normal school year that I'm having. Like I'm not really having the best section of my life right now. So it's kind of like I don't feel like myself. So that was just, you know, what I wrote on. I, com I completely <laughs> agree. So, so who, who exactly is, who's your favorite poet? I don't really have a genuine, like, favorite poet because I just believe, like, everyone's creativity is different. Yes. And I can't just, you know, have this favoritism towards everything. But who I would say speaks to me the most that I really love is my mother. My mother's probably my favorite poet. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mom, we love you. <laughs> we love you so much, Mom. You brought this you brought this powerhouse in the world, so we love you so much, Mom. I know you're out there watching it and listening. She's the bomb, okay? Thank you. I have to back up because you said this is your 10th grade year. Girl, you are talking like you have been on this earth before. So I want to know, what are you doing right now to kind of help move the needle a little bit for your peers and yourself? I've given a friend of mine this analogy, and I was like, are oh, you done crying? And she was like, yeah. I was like, no, you're not. You, you're not done crying because there's something else that's going to make you cry. Yes. And whether, whether you cry in the physical manner or the spiritual manner, there's always something that's going to make you cry. You're going to always want something. You're always going to get heartbroken. You're always going to want to be greater or yeah. better. And something is always going to happen. Yes. You're going to have to let your voice out because there's also a synonym for shouting, crying. You have to let it out. Mm. So it's not like you're done doing something. You're not done feeling this way. It's going to come around again because history she does repeat itself right now watching right she's probably doubting herself she's probably you know going through whatever what would you say to that little girl or little boy mm -hmm. yes. yes okay so i'm gonna talk to the audience now i'm i'm not originally from here i am from nigeria as i just said and i came here when i was 10 years old now my coming here i came here to delaware all white school, I was the only black girl. And there was a situation that happened. I didn't even know, like, it was like a white black thing over here. But a situation happened where, where I wore sandals and, like, my pinky toe was covered with the strap of the sandal. And they would, like, tell me, oh, do black people just have, like, four toes? And I pulled out my, my fifth toe and they were like, oh, you're, they're so ugly. Because I have this. I have this religion, which is Pentecostal, you know? And it's like, there's nothing artificial that you put on yourself. So I would always get bullied and stuff like, oh, she's so plain, even until now. You know, I don't speak the same sometimes. I don't have the same culture. I don't fit in whatsoever. So that's how even my poetry came around because it's like, there's no one to connect with. So I would like watch my own movies, talk to my mother more than anything. Like my mother is my best friend. Like I talk to my mother more than anything because that's the only person I can ever connect with. Even my friends back home, I can't connect with them. So it's not like I've always been like all so open to other people because I'm in a strange land by myself practicing a whole nother lifestyle. And it's always like I feel like life is just pulling down upon myself until I find my light. Not everyone is gonna accept you for who you are. You don't have to always 100% fit in with something or anybody or whatever society says is this or is that for yourself. You have to find the confidence to be yourself. And I'm saying that to say that everyone came to the world by themselves, not with anybody else. I didn't say, oh, yo, Z, let's go to Earth. You know, right. I didn't say, hey, Mr. Harris, let's go to Jupiter. Mm -hmm. No, I came here by myself, like Dr. Ogletree said, with my own purpose. You may not know your purpose as of right now, but honey, when you wake up with your eyes open into the world and you know who you are in that same day, you will be able to grab your gift, go into the world and use whatever gift you have, honey, because what is written for you is what you have for yourself. That was what I would say to the boy or the girl. Motivational speaker up in this. So that was an amazing interview by Miss Prayer herself, the motivational speaker in the making. Up next, we will have Miss Best, Banneker's own PTA Vice President. But beforehand, we will look at a little clip called Christmas vs. Xmas, directed and written by Miss Tracy Cruz herself, my granny. Which I started in. Okay. <laughs> We don't have a chimney. So, how is Santa going to come in and give me my toys? Warning to the parents with young children. The truth about Christmas will be exposed. Hmm. Well, 
all the little kids without chimneys are going to have to go to sleep a little earlier, you know, so that Santa can knock on all the, the doors of all the good little boys and girls and give them the toys that they want and deserve, okay? And, you know, the bad kids, he skips over and waits till next year to see how they behave. Mm -hmm. For real? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, just like them songs say, all right, he knows when you are sleeping. Sleepy. He knows when you're awake. Awake. He knows when you've been bad or good. So, bigger for goodness mm -hmm. sake. Child, he knows everything. You cannot hide, okay? For real? Ooh, that's decent. Santa Claus is just like God. He sees and knows everything. I mean, he gives you what you want, toys and stuff, and he knows when you've been bad, so he punishes you. This should be a Santa Claus church. <laughs> Not an auntie. Oh, wait, wait, wait. C come back. I, I want to go to bed. So Santa Claus can go. I understand that, honey. Okay, and that's all fine and well, but you just sit down, okay? Okay. Now you get nice and comfy because we are going to have a nice long talk. About what? We are going to have a talk about the real meaning of Christmas. I know that already. Christmas is about Santa Claus and gifts. Food, decorating the tree, eggnog, food, no school, and food. Child, hush. Okay, look. Just listen. Uh, we are going to have a little interview with you. So what inspired you to sing? Like, what, what inspired you? What's your passion? Like, the, the gripe, yeah. I think I was born to sing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think I was born to sing. When I was a little baby, my mom used to um, carry me around in the car. Oh. And so she thought I was crying a lot. And so my dad drove a truck, so he wasn't around a lot. So when my dad came around, he says, I don't think she's crying. I think she's singing. Oh, my Lord. With the radio. And he's a singer, too. Mm -hmm. And so they turned the radio off, and the so-called crying would stop. You turn the radio on, and the so-called crying would get louder. And so they embellished that. They gave me music lessons and let me sing in church. And, and at 55 years later, I'm still singing. Oh, I, I love that. Mm -hmm. I wish I had that, you know. <laughs> so, Ms. Best, if you had the chance to go on a show like America's Got Talent or mm -hmm. American Idol and any of the other talent searches, would you? Or have you already auditioned? Well, and when I was coming up, those shows did not exist. But the local recreation center always had talent shows. Every year they had talent shows and they had banquets and all types of things. And so, of course, my overzealous mother okay. would put me on every show. It didn't matter what it was. It could be a flower program. Oh, wow. She would put me on the program to sing a song for which we had rehearsed day and night and I began to really love singing in school and so eventually um, I made it my it was my, became my passion mm. and after high school I got a full ride at Bethune Cookman for a music scholarship oh, so oh, now full. it's my profession yes a oh. full ride oh. everything paid for is a HBCU so we love it oh yes, yes. what's your favorite song I'm like Dr. Ogletree. I, I have a favorite song every other week and every other day. <laughs> but Lift Every Voice and Sing became my favorite song when I first heard it. I didn't even know it was an our black anthem. I just thought that was a wonderful song. Mm. Then I found out that it was the um, national black anthem. Mm -hmm. But Lift Every Voice and Sing is probably my number one favorite song. Mm -hmm. I did this with... with with prayer and I just just with your energy sitting right beside me I'm just inspired for some reason is there anything that you want to say to those Trojans or Trojan supporters out there just as encouragement something that you've just been burning to say to us mm. well Mr. Harris being the vice president of PTA for Banneker this year has been the most important thing in my life other than Robert and George my students um, all of you all are my students. I remember prayer when she was at McNair, and um, I was so impressed by her also, as you were. And following them to Banneker, I remember all the ninth and the tenth grade students uh, that came to, to Banneker, because I was an active mother then too. 
I would like to say um, to all the parents of students at all schools, not just Banneker, that uh, we need you at yes. the school. Students do better when parents are present. Even if you just come once a month for an hour or 15 minutes, just let the students know that I will be up here. Mm. I will be around. Mm. And you will see a marked difference in behavior yes. and in their grades and how they are acting in, at school and class. Mm -hmm. And so being the vice president of PTA has been the most important thing in my day. Okay. And not only with uh, PTA, we did say that she can sing, y'all. So I want to know, we want to know, the world wants to know, do you have anything that you want to sing for us today? Well, I did write a little verse. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And it's for my Trojans. Love it. We are the Trojans. Mighty, mighty Trojans. I say we are the Trojans. We're the mighty, mighty Trojans. The pride is back in B-Town, and the new day is all around. Students are feeling it. We are committed to it. We are the Trojans. We're the mighty, mighty Trojans. I say we are the Trojans. We're the mighty, mighty Trojans. Now y'all appear out to me. We're the Trojans. We're the Trojans. Mighty Trojans. Mighty Trojans. We are the Trojans. We are the Trojans. Mighty Trojans. Mighty Trojans. Mighty Trojans. Mighty Trojans. Mighty Trojans. Mighty Trojans. We are the Trojans. Oh, we are the Trojans. We that love it. Amazing. We love it. We love it. We love it. All right. Now, that was amazing. So, that was a lot of my day right now. Okay. <laughs> so, let's, whew, okay, get my thoughts together. All right. Now, on to our next guest. Her name is Miss Callie Halloway. All right. She will be performing with me, doing the, you know, violin. You know, we're, we're, we're pretty great at it. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> So next is our interview with her. And we are back with Callie and Zephaniah. So you two, is this a normal duo that we have here? Uh, I'm gonna say no. no. <laughs> uh, I just, you know, originally the plan was, you know, when I hit her up, I was like, hey girl, look, I really want you to, you know, express your talents and stuff like that. Like, I feel like it would be a great, you know, opportunity. And then she was like, mm. <laughs> can we, can, can you play with me? And I was like, all right, well, all right, we'll do it. So that's how the, that's how Callie and Z became Callie and Z. What instruments do you play? I play the violin. Oh, well, I dabble in everything. Hold on. I'm just playing. I, I play, I play the violin. I play the guitar i just started dabbling in the guitar you know what i mean so i feel like you know you should dabble into something else too you know what i mean yeah. i'm gonna try mm -hmm. so it's not three of you um but it is two you're a duo so who's the beyonce who's kelly huh? oh you ain't gotta you ain't gotta, she already know that i'm the beyonce <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Who Kelly? Who Kelly? Not me. Yes, you. Not me. Yes, it is. Girl, you Michelle. Anyways, uh, <laughs> if I'm Kelly, you Michelle. All I got to say about that. How did each of you learn how to play the violin? Um, Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> hmm. Well, my brother used to play, so he taught me, and I caught on because I wanted to do what he did. Did your brother inspire you for that? Like, how, why did he inspire you to do such things? Well... My brother, he was kind of my father figure, so, mm -hmm. and I always wanted to follow in his footsteps, so, like, I don't know, I just tell you along what he did. Mm -hmm. All right. What about you, Z? Well, I learned the violin. I was forced into it. <laughs> didn't have any operation, you know what I mean? I was, I was forced to the violin. You know, uh, in the sixth grade, my mother made me play because I, I didn't want to do chorus no more. I, I'm a singer. Eh, how you doing? Uh, so, and that's basically, that's basically 
you know. Well, enough talk. Let's hear both of you play. How about that? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. When I tell you, we want to thank all of our um, interviewees from Dr. Don Ogletree, Miss Bess, Prayer, Pascal. I mean, today was a fun filled day. Z, I'm excited to see what you can do. Huh, huh. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to close out with these two playing, and we hope you enjoy today. Z, do you have any last words for your people? <laughs> well, my last words would have to be peace, love, joy, and happiness. Keep it straight, people. <laughs>